All right, in this conditional display tutorial, I wanna show you some really neat ways in which you can make a page dynamic. Now, in a previous tutorial that I'll link uh, somewhere up in the card or, or down below in the description, I showed you how you can do something kind of like this that you're seeing on the screen right now, where you can have like a My Account page. This might be like a, a WooCommerce My Account page. It might be a dashboard that you make for your Thrive Apprentice students. Uh, whatever your purpose is, this should look pretty familiar. Now, in previous tutorials, what would happen when you would click on one of these tiles is it would take you to another page. But now with conditional display and the ability to use URL parameters, we can stay on one page that does everything and it feels and pretty much acts dynamic. So for example, we have right here, you can see a contact form. We're on the contact support. We can click on edit profile. All it does is quickly reload the page and it just changes what's down below. So you can see it's really fast. Now that's one version. Another version, we can do something like this where we have a vertical menu. Um, really anything that you can design visually that can be clicked on, can be linked, can use conditional display URL parameters. For example, I can click on courses and now I have a complete course list of all of my courses dynamically populated with conditional display. And I can easily click on my profile and it's already swapped back out. So let's take a look at how to build this one page dynamic content swapping using conditional display. So first things first, design whatever it is you want to click on in order to interact with and swap content. In this example, I have these four tiles up here and then I have a background section directly below it. The background section supports conditional display. All of the container type elements inside of Thrive do. Now our default display for our background section in this case is completely blank. And we have two additional ones that I've created for the support and the profile tile. Here's how you create this. So click this green add display button and it adds a new display option here. And you can see when I click on these, they turn orange and you can see the content is swapping out on the screen. So since I've already done profile and support, let's go ahead and do the download section. So I'll click on the download section and let's give it a new name. We'll just call it downloads, click apply. Now I like to click on it so that it's orange and highlighted. Now you can see I have my empty background section. So I'm going to just add something in here. I don't know, maybe I'll just add a list or something like that, a styled list, and you could add uh, download links or whatever you want. We'll keep it simple. So now I'm going to go back to the background section and I have my downloads selected still. I'm going to click on this like slide rule, abacus looking filtering options. And I'm going to see that it says conditional display for downloads. Now we have to create the rules or the conditions under which this will show. So for us, we want it to display the content inside of our background section when a new condition is set. For that condition, we're going to say when. We're going to use request data because here under select field, we have URL query string. A URL query string is comprised of variables and values. So in this case, maybe we're talking about sections. So I'll say the variable for this is section. And we want to have it equal, well, it's called downloads, so why don't we just call it downloads? When the variable called section equals downloads, this section will show. And I also like to click this pencil right in the upper left-hand corner and call it downloads and hit enter. Terrific, now we can click save and continue. So once you repeat that process for each of your tiles, create a new conditional display, name it, fill it with the content you want to show, set the display conditions, all you have to do is go to the tile. In this case, we're going to go to downloads and we're going to find animation and action because it's a content box. And we're going to add a link to it. Now here's how you do the variable and the value. All you have to do is put a question mark that starts our URL query string and then type whatever you put in for your variable. Remember we put the word section and then an equal sign. And then we're going to say downloads. That's the syntax or that's the formatting that you need for the variable and the value pairing in a query string. And now all you have to do is click apply. Now you can save your work and let's go ahead and preview this. So now you can see we have our edit profile, contact support, and I'm going to click downloads and you can see it swapped and it showed our styled list that we put there. And that's it all on one page. Now I want to show you another way in which you can create something that's dynamic. And a simple one is to take just a set of columns and put something in the left column that can be interactive, like a vertical menu. You may remember this from my dashboard tutorial recently on the channel here. All I did was take a vertical menu. This one's vertical menu number 12. And I gave links to each of these menu items, for example, courses. And you can see here, I have in the target URL, a variable. In this case, I gave it the variable vertical and the value was courses. I did the same thing for 
edit my profile. And if we click on over here in the right hand column, so if I go to my columns right here, you can see in the right hand column, I have a content box. This content box is what has conditional display. So on the left hand side, I have conditional display for courses and a conditional display section for the profile. The process is exactly the same. If I wanted to add another section for get help, I would just click add display. I would drag in a form, choose the contact form that I like, but whatever content I want into this particular section of the content box, go back to my content box, give it a name. We can call this get help, click apply, click on our rules, click add new set condition, choose request data, URL query string. We'll call this one vertical. It can be whatever you want it to be for that uh, variable equals, and we'll call this get help and click save condition. Now I just need to go to get help in the navigation and for the target URL, put question vertical equals get help and click save. Now let's test that by coming down here. I can click on courses on edit my profile and then get help. There you go. And it's really that easy. So despite my very, very mundane and simple tutorial here visually, I think the dynamic elements of this tutorial really open you up to making anything that you want that's interactive and visual that you want to feel dynamic all on one page instead of having to redirect to other pages. Now, let me tell you the big reason I love this method because there's technically nothing wrong with going to another page, but I love this method because you can link to the exact same page, but you can link to the section that you want to show. So for example, you could hyperlink anywhere else on your site to a section. Let's say I wanted to hyperlink to downloads. I could hyperlink directly to this. Let's say it was uh, convology.com slash my account question mark section equals downloads. And this is what would show right when the page loads. So there's that added benefit of using fewer pages and also being very linkable throughout your entire site with just one page. So I hope that helps. I hope that a little simple walkthrough of the mechanics of conditional display show you yet another really neat way that you can use this tool.